All right, we are back with a vintage Chrissy Chaos episode. T.T. Jerry's on. Even Vinny comes on camera for one of the first times ever on the show. Jasmine comes on. Delilah's off camera yelling into the mic. Violet, it is vintage, vintage chaos. No guests, just me, you, and me crazy familiar. Homeless Pip on the ones and twos in the background. We had a great time. I talked about all different kinds of topics. Jerry told us new story. She was in the hospital. Find out why. Thank God she survived. Talk about my experience on Joe Rogan. We talk about the new books I'm reading. We talk about everything. It's just a happy, good lucky, good lucky. It's a happy, good lucky time. I'm on half an edible the whole time, baby. So we are locked in. We're having fun. Go to chrisdcomedy.com for Tiki Wikis, July 8th and 9th. Providence Comedy Connection. Show's almost sold out, so get them now. And August 17th to the 20th, Brea Improv in California. This is all new material, by the way. An hour of new material. Nothing, especially West on Netflix, which, by the way, is streaming on Netflix. Go check it out. All new material. Be part of the new hour, the new one that we're going to sell to HBO Max. Baby, I am with Daddy and I. We have to start something. So please just go inside, and then you can come back outside when we're done. Go ahead. Come on. The Chaos, Chrissy Chaos Podcast has started. We're trying to get Delilah to go inside because we have some topics to talk about that are for mature adults. Very mature. Very mature adults. Especially with Titi here. They're for mature adults yeah. and immature adults. <laughs> 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 All right, Delilah, come on, please. Delilah, Mommy, please don't make me. Why? why? And everything do that Come inside. on, Delilah. Do you want to go to Hershey Park? Do you want? Do you want to do? Well, you're you're really messing up right now. All you have to do is listen to me. I told you, baby, and then we could do Hershey Park. Baby, it looks beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. We'll see you in a few minutes, okay, honey? The cutest girl in the world ever, Delilah. Mm. Welcome to the Chaos, everyone. Chrissy Chaos Podcast. We are here today going vintage chaos we're going back to the roots and we are going back to the tree of life that plant that that we planted about a year and a half ago actually no do you realize do you realize that we started this podcast in january ish of last year do you know that you have only known this podcast for not even a year and a half, and you've only known T.T. Jerry for barely a year. You've only known T.T. Jerry. No, I think it's longer than that. No. It was in March. March, so it's it's March. June. It's June. June. So it's a year and it's, a few it's, it's 15 months. Yeah. That's not even a year and a half yet. And look at that with the little yeah. diamond on your face. Who put the diamond on your I face? Did. Nice. It looks pretty. Wow, you were with the guy yesterday that was coming. Hi, folks. I miss you guys. Look at that. T.T. Well, Jerry is back. Well, not, is, only uh, is, not only is T.T. Um, tower. Yeah, the Puerto Rican <laughs> town. Yeah. Not only is T.T. Jerry back, folks, we almost lost T.T. Jerry outright. We were calling T.T. Jerry to bring him to a pool party. That We actually went to a Dominican pool party yesterday. So it's nice. Dominican it's nice Republic. that two blocks away from where I live, I can be in Santo, D Santo, Santo Domingo, Domingo. And here I can be in San Juan. It's very nice. I, You know, why have to pay for freaking $30,000 trips anymore to the islands when I can just walk two blocks? You want to go to Dominican Republic, you go like 50. Two minutes from here. I can't wait to the. I can't wait to the. You know, my community uh, board hears this podcast and is like, "Wait a second, that's too many Latinos yeah, too in a many. five block radius. Oh. We can't have Staten this many Island. members of the Latinx community." Uh, <laughs> um, so, so, um, so, what happened? So, so we were calling TT Jerry yesterday because I said I want to. I want you to come to the pool party with us. I want you to see our neighbor's pool. It's a beautiful pool. Um, also, you know, I just want to. You know. Can hang out with Violet. You can hang out with us. Kind of want to just relax, whatever. Calling him, calling him, messaging him on Instagram. No response. Not getting read. Not even getting through. Then this morning, there's a ring at the doorbell at eight thirty. I thought it was homeless pimp with his with his camera equipment and and a and a bag of salad and Heineken. I thought he was here, ready to go, ready to start the pod. But it was TT Jerry. Guess what? It was T.T. Jerry me. in Chrissy Chaos merch and a Puerto Rican from the dead and a Puerto Rican towel wrapped around his, her waist. So we were like, "What the hell happened?" She goes, "I'm so sorry. I was in the hospital. My blood pressure went 200 over 100." And my first question was, "Are you on crack again?" <laughs> <laughs> but what happened, T.T.? What happened? Take take I, us through. What? They just told me it was stress, depression, how you say that? Anxiety, anxiety. anxiety? 
Why? Yeah. Here, if you need help, I have the word tattooed on my arm because I'm a normal, well-adjusted person. Anxiety. 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 It's insanity. They know what I'm saying. Anxiety, insanity, insanity, insanity. They know what I'm like, saying. It sounds like a mix of anxiety and insanity, yeah. and that's kind of where we live. Just right, yeah. whatever, however you want to say it. So, but but take us through. When did you start to feel sick? What happened? Because no, we don't, I we're get, scared. My, I, I get blood pressure problems. When I was in prison, I used to get my high blood pressure and everything. And used to get high blood pressure. They never put me on medication. Why not? Because I don't want to be on so many medications. I take so many medications, that that's probably what's killing me. Okay, but Poppy, hypertension, so, high blood pressure is known as the silent killer because you may not feel a symptom of high blood pressure, but if the blood right. pressure is high and high, you could have a problem. So why not take medication for that? Cause I don't want it, like I said, I don't want to put too many pills and all that junk shit in my body. But a high blood pressure pill is a good pill but to it's have. It's not like I really need it because it's not, that's like medic high blood what pressure. What do you mean it's not like you really need it? Your blood, blood pressure, pressure was just 200 over 100. Yeah, but high blood pressure medication is like if you constantly get high blood pressure. If you're listening, if you're not looking at the screen, uh, T.T. Jerry is, is delicately balancing the microphone off her left hip. To my left hip. Yeah, but it's like when you constantly get high blood pressure, then they put you on high blood pressure medication. But if you only get it like once every blue moon, they're not gonna put you on high on. T T. But if your blood pressure was two hundred over, yeah, they gave me IV, right? And they gave me a shot, and little by little, it started going down. Okay, and it started going down. Yeah. All right, because I was worried. So now, and then, how long did you stay in the hospital? Um, to two in the morning. So two in the morning? Yeah, the oh. day before yesterday. And then what happened? Did you just, how, how'd you get home? I walked home. You walked home yeah, with high It's only three blocks away, the hospital from where I live at. Can you guys do me a favor? Can you write, go to patreon.com slash Christy Comedy, the only way to get in touch with this show, the way where we are outside the box, where we kind of go wild. TT takes the towel off on Patreon. You can <laughs> see everything. Um, everything. That's what it is. That's what patreon.com slash Christy Comedy is. So join it. Be, be a Puerto Rican. Be part of the chaos. Can you write on the community board? If you are a healthcare practitioner, does TT need to be on blood pressure medication and which one? And then we will illegally get it to her. If And we'll, I'll put it, I'll smash it up and put it in her applesauce if she doesn't want to take it because we cannot lose TT in the summer no of chaos. Medication. So we are outside. My medication that I really need is a motherfucking man. That's what I wow. need. I think that's all my stress and my blood pressure going up and everything. Well, my butthole is going like this. It's time. It, your butthole is like it's this. Time. It's like Pac-Man. It's, it's looking. Time. It's just looking to eat. It's clogged. It wants to eat black It's burp. clogged. I need Drano. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yo, I love that. I'm, I love getting, <laughs> I'm getting so fucking old. You know how I know I'm getting old? How? Because it's like I cannot bend my knees anymore. You can't bend your knees? Oh, my God. I, all my life, I've been bending my knees, getting down on my knees. Now it's like if I'm with a guy, he's fucked. I can't get on my motherfucking knees. So I'm going to have to do the blows. I just standing up. Nice. Like this without getting on my knees. What the fuck? That's what old age does to That's me. what old age does to you. Unfortunately, I, as you get older, guys, you can't suck a cock like you used to. Um, I mean, what I love about this is we are doing, we have converted, we're, we're going to try this out. We're going to do kind of outdoor, outside chaos for the summer. This is the start of our summer beautiful. series. So we're going to do it right here under the pergola. And what is a what is a very interesting thing is there's new neighbors who moved in right on the side of this wall. Oh, they did. And there's they families walking down the block because the kids have off from school today just hearing T.T. Jerry say she can't suck <laughs> cock like she used to. Uh, so <laughs> I probably all by the gay with their ears. Yeah, Listen, but I still off. think if the, if I still think if the community board heard us talking about sucking cock, they'd still rather have us than all these damn Latinos. Hello. Uh, uh, no, I'm kidding. No, but that's why I wanted you to come. Yeah. That's why I wanted you to come with us yesterday because we're going to a Dominican pool party and I said, I bet you there's a man here because, because you know, I think what I've learned about Latinos being a, being a part of the Latino uh, uh, race for the last eight years is that Latinos, when it comes to sexuality, are very free. Right. I think Latinos are they're in tune with their sexuality. I don't think that it matters. I think like, you know, whatever, gay, straight, transgender, it doesn't matter. It's all about love and connection with the Latinos. That's well, the my, biggest thing. I just got a text from my man. He said, Oh, speak it to the mic. He texts me. He texts me and he said, Baby, are you ready for me? I'm coming out four more months. Wow. He said, Are you ready for me? Now which guy is what? this again? 
That's the one that's in prison, the one with the scar on his face. Scar. Oh, Scar, Scar, right. Yeah. That's Scar, because I remember we spoke about him a few months yeah. ago. Wow, so Scar's got about four months of... Yeah. TT, even more of a reason to take that blood pressure medication. What happened? I'm telling you. Though, because TT, no, well, let me tell you this. Another side effect of hypertension, and Pimp can 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 pull this up. Another hi- side effect of hypertension is... Could you- a high blood pressure cause heart attack? Yes, heart attack, stroke, that's what it causes. And the biggest one for you, TT, and especially the one that's going to affect Scar the most, is it can cause erectile dysfunction. You cannot get an erection if you if if, if you have too high blood pressure. And absolutely, heart attack and stroke. That's what. That's why I'm telling you. I think that's the medication you need to take. Okay, is you need to take that because I don't want you to have a heart attack or a stroke, and then we find you, you know, dead in your apartment with freaking McDonald's. What would what would you have? What with freaking a can of adobo on you? And flour and soil from well, from then, the plants. Then you celebrate Titi's death. What the hell? Well, that's one thing about Imagine you. Imagine coming out in the news on the broadcast. I can, got bad news. Titi Jerry just passed away. Can we pull up Pimpy when you can? Erectile it, it, erectile dysfunction, high blood pressure, and I want to confirm. Look at this. I love I love when the when the curtain when these when these blow. It's it's like it's like somebody putting their arms around me. <laughs> their Staten Island <laughs> arms around me. By the way, whatever psychopath found my address and sent me a um a a card saying that they graduated from college with a picture of them that's how did you find my address was it a female or a male it was a female oh really well yeah because jasmine opened it so um how did you don't please don't do that please don't mail me things um I, listen i appreciate i appreciate you being a fan i really really do and it was a nice note but you gotta understand it's very creepy and weird when someone i have no idea who they are just sends a letter to yeah, my house. It's very nowhere. strange because now we've now TT it you know is sleeping over tonight. Um okay, over yeah. time, listen to this TT. This is important for you. Over time, over time high, high blood pressure. pressure I'll read it, I'll read it. Damages the lining of the blood vessels, yeah, which speaking of lining, I need a new lining on the pool. The lining arteries. of the blood vessels and arteries to harden, don't get excited, and narrow, harden. which is called atherosclero- arteriosclerosis, limiting blood flow. This means that less, this means blood. That less blood flows the to the penis. penis. For some men, the decreased blood flow makes it difficult to achieve and maintain erection. So you're not getting enough blood flow to your pishkadil. Uh, but you know what? As long as my man gets a heart on, that's all I care. Because that's what TT is about. <laughs> TT, you know, is I'm a- like, a, I, when I'm with a man, I'm like a female. So if I don't get a heart on while I'm with a man, even better for me. <sighs> TT receives love. And yes. I'm I'm like a like a woman when I'm in bed. I don't like to feel like I'm a man when I'm right. with another man in bed. What I is like a- to play the woman's role Do in bed. Do people get upset if you you're not hard in bed? Um few guys have have tried to reach down there while they making love to me and they go, Yo, what what's up? I don't turn you on, why are you not hard? And I said, Because I could control myself. So do you watch uh transgender porn? I don't like to, to watch transgenders. No? They don't turn Why me on. Not? Transgender does not turn me on at all. Because I feel you know like what? that's gross. I get it, though. I get it, though, because you you, you don't... It, it'd be like... It's um, like a female. It's like and, a female. No, no, no. It's because you are transgender. You don't want to see yourself having sex. You want right. to see something outside the box I, I like, sex. I like, I like That's why I like bestiality. Name, dog-ass dudes. You Just know, a guy like, fucking they a They look zebra. like real dudes. I don't, I don't like to be with nobody else that's more feminine than me. Right. Or, or feminine dude. I like, I like dog ass dudes. Interesting. That mm-hmm. look like a man, everything. That's what I like. Oh, Scar? I didn't like know a, Scar was a thug ass dude. Yeah, he is. It's just like a, like a straight <laughs> woman. She don't like to be with another uh, a feminine guy, more feminine than her. So that what he's do you, Jasmine feminine. does. Jasmine loves feminine guys. She does? I guess. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> what do you type when you watch porn? What do you type in the search engine? Thug ass. Thug ass Thug guys. Ass, yeah. Tugs. <laughs> Thug ass guys. Thug ass niggas behind bars. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of this episode. <laughs> Thug ass niggas behind bars. <laughs> Getting <Wow>. crack. <laughs> wow. I Getting like- cracked. <laughs> Dude, Pornhub's a mess lately. I, I I think I think porn's gone too far. Well, I they think so well somebody somebody said that they were gonna upload a clip of my special onto Pornhub. I was like, can you do that? You know that I don't really watch just porn. Do I, I no, should we do it? Should we just put the trailer up? Yeah, why not? Or just like why a, you mean? 
Pornhub, you can upload really anything you want to Pornhub, and there's ways to get it passed. There's ways to get like videos that aren't porn because the thing is, is I think the the um, idea of porn and what con- what counts as porn has broadened so much that it's like you can't tell me that watching whatever video I upload isn't porn to me or a group of people like me. Yeah. I think that's what it is. But also, me and Howie have been talking. We think we should release a sex tape. We're going to release a sex tape. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's do that. Let's release yeah. a sex tape. I think it should be you and Would you ever make a sex tape, TT? We've never asked you that. I mean, if I get paid good enough, I will. You would do it. Yeah. Now it would be it would have would have to be gay. Sex? I don't give a fuck. I don't give a hell who's around, who's watching nothing. If money is in the money. game, I'm down. I what about do starting an OnlyFans for real? Oh, I, I just give a blowjob or something to somebody if the money is good. There you go. Hello. Um, I actually got into all the girls that go to Dubai on on social media. Uh, the, on social media, they're always in Dubai and shit. On YouTube, they're breaking down their messages. People like hack their messages and see how much they get paid for what. Wow! Already? And it's like twenty five grand to like have Dude. a pass. Fa- pass uh, what? Well, twenty five grand like what for how long? Like for an hour? Five days oh, of just sex. Oh, like having twenty five grand for the, five days of sex with the That's same guy, <laughs> with the same person, or different people? Like a fat like prince from the middle of nowhere. All right, real quick. No, yeah. we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it real quick. We're gonna teaching with Titi. Twenty five thousand dollars. For $25,000, five days of sex, how many dollars a day to have sex with them? Go. What's the answer? How many dollars a how day? How many do- If I gave you $25,000 to have sex with me for for five days, how many dollars a day is, is that? That would be um, $5,000 a day. TTC? They teach them. Uh. <laughs> they, they teach them in prison. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, no. I- yo, TT's smart as shit. Um... <laughs> Jerry, what uh, what I also want to talk to you about is I was going down, you know, there was uh, uh, I was going down a, not a wormhole. I was asking, you know, questions, um, and you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, a, this is a true thing. The service industry, you may have realized wherever you are in the country, in the world, that service is taking a little bit longer. Um, there's not as many uh, waiters and waitresses, and the reason is some people think the real genuine reason that you're seeing a dip in the service industry, specifically bartenders, waiters, waitresses, is because bar t- uh, uh, restaurants always want to hire pretty people. I know it's yeah. discrimination, but it's what it is. They want to hire pretty girls and good-looking guys. That's just what it is. I'm sorry. It's just if, if, if you got to be pretty to work in a restaurant. So that's what it is. What's happened now is instead of these waiters and waitresses with no other job experience having to just slave and get yelled at by customers and, you know, work long hours and not get paid that much unless they can have a good night and get tips, what they're all doing is turning to OnlyFans. So now they're making 20, 30, 40 grand a month, some of these people, on OnlyFans to not have to leave their house. So like, how can you convince me to go work at your bar, restaurant, comedy club? I don't want to because the money is there. So we want to know, TT, have you considered starting an OnlyFans? Um, people have wrote on comments to me that why I don't start my OnlyFans. Why don't you? You post a lot of content on your Instagram. Can we, can we you know, what is what is this weird flex? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, well, we'll, we'll no. get to that in a second. Um, um, because you post a lot of content, TT. Like, can we pull up TT's Instagram, Pimpy, please? And then we'll go back to his articles. I want to talk about this. Because you post a lot of stuff for free, and I feel like you've given yeah. it away for free. For t- I mean, Pimp, am I wrong in, in saying this? That, that we think it's a good idea for her to start an OnlyFans? Of course it's a great idea. Yeah, so go down. So, I mean, look, some of these pics, I mean, look at this. This is all OnlyFans material. What you would get on TT's OnlyFans is this with a little bit less clothes and a little bit. So, we yeah. could have this exact clothes, but you're in a thong. Yes, with a thong. And a little- I'm not saying you have to uh, spread eagle. You don't have to do yeah. any of that. But why not? If everybody else is doing it, why can't you? You're beautiful. You have a fan base. You're going to have people that want to pay for this to see you on OnlyFans. And some of them are going to be my friends that will go with a disguised username. Yeah. Hey, look at my Shout out Debo. Look at that one. Probably with just thongs on, I could do it. Why that. not? Hell yeah. Honestly. But I did look into uh, what people were really pulling. The average person I read in one of my articles was yeah. $180 a month. So only like- $180 this- a month. <laughs> Yeah, I think TT can. I think TT can get a minimum a thousand a month. I think I month. could pull it if I want to. <laughs> What's Listen, up to you? You could do whatever you want in this world, as long as you know what you're doing, and you got fans and people like what you're doing. You just gotta know how to do it. Because my, th- I understand yeah. the what? question is this. I understand the debate is this is morality. Because so it was interesting. I was having a conversation the other day, and how we were talking about how. 
you know, right now it's it's like a scientific revolution again, like how there was an industrial revolution and how usually when religion is is high up, not a lot of things happen because, you know, religion is like a, a religion. It's, 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 it's saying you that you can't do this, you can't do that. There's all these rules. But now religion is way down, but science is up. So science, we're, we're getting a lot of science. We're getting a lot of progress in a lot of different fields. But what's down, and I never considered this, is morality. When science goes up, morality goes down. When religion's up, morality is up. So now you have a lot of sex out of wedlock. Hello. You have a lot of divorce. You have a lot of OnlyFans stuff. You have a lot of hypersexual sexualize things because morality is down it's just make that money so i'm you know but you are someone who's you know you're already older 57 years old you've lived a full life you know where you're seven who said i was 57 56 56 53 53 oh wow 35 <laughs> hello hey 35 year old little baby girl um you, you are setting your ways i'm not saying an 18 year old girl who's not setting her ways should go on and yeah. be doing this if they're doing it how can we stop them because the morality is down but someone like you who's lived a full life knows what they want and don't want i think why not your morals are what they are already right but morality no, is down, life. and it's something I think we need to consider. It's something I think a lot, not enough of us are thinking about is the morality of the world. Because morality is a currency, too. Not everything's money. Not everything's your God. Sometimes just being a moral good person, because I thought about it like this, right? So in the 1500s or 1600s or whatever, uh, throughout m many, uh, you know, a, a lot of, of, of time, you, they would go watch a public hanging. Somebody would be yeah. getting hung, and they would go watch it. And at that time, the people who were watching the hanging didn't think they were doing anything wrong. They were like, oh, right. this is, you know, we watch it. This is just part of our life because they didn't know anybody. To them. So and now like we would never go watch a public hanging, right? You would never go watch that. But what do we do? How many times do we Instagram live somebody getting hit by a train or Instagram live, you know, somebody getting shot, shot. or instead of helping them, we video them. Yeah. So we, so my point is our brains are the same as they were in ancient times. It's just we have different things that were th everybody's brain at, at, at their time when they're living makes it think that the thing they're doing is bad is okay we have like this button in our brain sure. that says oh we can make this okay just like we're making a lot of things okay today that 150 years from now they'll look back and be like remember how disgusting those people were but those people 150 years in the future will be doing something disgusting to the people 150 years in the future more so it's an interesting thing I took half an edible and it just kicked in and we are ready to start uh, this podcast yeah. whoa did I take it and Jasmine yelled at me she said you're turning to yes. a drug addict i said yes and i am shot guys, out homeless pimp <laughs> i'm gonna have to cut right here because i gotta go babysit okay i gotta go do my job and guys please stop the violence and tt before you go let's live this life happy stop the violence everybody out there please enough is enough i agree tt what's your tips for summer what, what are we gonna uh, do this summer just huh? summer What's tips. Can you give us two or three summer? tips for summer for, for guys and girls out there to enjoy their summer and babies to enjoy their summer? Um, enjoy your summer, guys. Just go out, have a good time, hang out with families, hang out with good, close hang friends. Out with, yeah. Don't hang out with nobody that's negative. You know, hang out with positive people mm -hmm. and enjoy your summer. I think we should do a New York event with TT hosting it. Well, maybe a twerking contest. Well, no, no, no. It's interesting you say that. Just TT, before yeah. you go, because I just had this idea and we're just, I didn't clear. I, I'm just going to go and you'll, Pimp and Vanity will tell me if we can't do this. But I'm just going to say it and either we'll edit it out or we'll keep it in. What I wanted to do is our Patreon members are right now, they keep going up. I, I want to get it to 6,000 Patreon members. Right now, today, we have like 5,300 because we always lose a lot of Patreon members in the first of the month. It's a credit card thing. But if you go to patreon.com slash Christy Comedy right now and you become a Patreon member, okay, you get all this bonus content. You get all, there's a whole pile up library of episodes you don't even know about that only exists on the Patreon. We have fun. We post vlogs. We have, we have all types of crazy questions, interactions. You're a real part of the family. But if we get the Patreon members, to 6,000, what I want to do is in the summer, I was thinking sometime in mid-July, if we can get it up, or August, whenever we get there, if we can get to 6,000 Patreon members, I wanted to have a Chrissy Chaos family block party. That's what I want to do. Yeah. A block party for the Patreon members. I was thinking we'll go through the city, or we'll go even here if we got to do it, or whatever, and we'll get, we'll shut down the block, and That's it's for right. Patreon members only. There'll be food, DJs, and a twerking contest with T.T. Jerry. Dancing on songs, everything. You can, we can everything. have we can have a uh, uh, we can have a camera booth with homeless pimp where you bring in different types of cameras and he films you on them or something. <laughs> Vanity will have a rock climbing event um, where we're climbing rocks and at the top of the rocks is a bottle of white Zinfandel. You drink that. Um, 
of course, he, uh, uh, of course, Vinny will have a fitness class. Um, maybe my kids will be doing arts and crafts, and um, and I'll be doing ashwagandha because I've been drinking ashwagandha now, and I have ashwagandha in, right. in my in my thing, in my cup. But we'll do a, a family block party when we get to family six thousand Patreon party. members. A Patreon family block party because I was That's thinking, right. oh, let's rent a space, but. Who knows if all 6,000 show up and we have the most banging block party of the summer. That's right. But you can only get in if you're a Patreon member. And Titi Jerry will give classes of salsa. Oh, I dancing love that. Wow. I love classes that. of dancing salsa. salsa and you guys will follow me doing salsa What dance. do you think of that? I we'll love have it. a do you great like that? time. I love it. But We're going to have a beautiful time. Shit. Let's just do it just on the ferry. Get let's into just... that Patreon, guys. Let's Come on, let's do the it. Ferry, bro. Okay, just all right. Over the ferry. Here's the thing. Let's do it. <laughs> let, no, but let me tell you. Let me tell you. When we get no, that's a great idea, Pip. When we get to six thousand Patreon members, it's either going to be a family block party, or if we can't, just like Pimp said, I don't know if you heard him. Staten Island Ferry, we meet at a certain point. We meet, we tell you the exact time to be there. We all meet in a section. We get on that ferry, we flash mob the ferry with 6,000 Puerto That's Ricans, right. 6,000 Christians. And we'll, we'll Christians. party on that ferry boat. Yes, and yeah. we'll all be there. The family will be there. Dude, that would go viral. That would be, yeah. that would, that would be crazy. Yeah, yeah. that would be sick. Yeah. And I'm going to have my kids in blackface so you can't recognize them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. TT. All all right, guys, I love you, baby. I love you guys. Mucho, love you, baby. mucho, beso, mucho amor to everybody out there. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Pip. I love you guys. I love you, babe. Love you. And can you smooth it over with Jazz? She's mad at me because I took an edible. So just tell her it's okay. There you go. Boom. All right. Yeah, TT. Magic Spoon, baby. I love it. It's the best cereal in the world, if you want to eat the cereal that you see when you're a kid, but you can't now because you're an adult and you don't want the sugar, you don't want the carbs, Magic Spoon is the cereal for you. It is keto-friendly, it is sugar-free, it is grain-free, it is soy-free, and it is low-carb. I'm sorry, it has one gram of sugar. The, the Honey Nut flavor has one gram of sugar, their new flavor, but only four net carbs, 13 to 14 grams of protein, zero grams of sugar. I love it. It's a part of my family's life. We've been ordering it. We use the promo code CHAOS all the time, $5 off your first bundle. If you go to magicspoon.com slash chaos, grab a custom bundle of cereal and use the promo code chaos, you get $5 off your order. It is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, refund your money. No questions asked, but you're going to love it. Magic Spoon, it's my favorite. The cocoa, the fruity pebbles, the peanut butter, I love it. And this new honey nut flavor, um, got to try it out. It's all we eat um, as a family. We eat a bowl in the morning, bowl at night, and we're getting jacked and ripped, baby. Magicspoon.com slash chaos. $5 off your order. Grab a custom bundle of cereal now. Use that promo code chaos. This podcast is sponsored by Better Help. You know I talk about mental health. You know I talk about anxiety, depression, narcissism, everything else, all the emotions of what's happened over the last couple of years, all the emotions that might happen over the next couple of years. You need to talk to somebody, and Better Help is the people that do it the best. It's all online. It's over Zoom. You can do it on the phone even. It's just, it's, it's easy. The, the counselors and that you speak to are just well-trained. Um, they listen to you. I've been doing it. It helps me so much. Um, you know, cause listen, a lot of us are burnt out. I was burnt out. I talked about it openly on my podcast, burnt out, you know, you feel like you don't want to do anything, getting more depressed, better help helps with that. It helps me with that. It helps you with that. We're all a little bit burnt out. BetterHelp, if you don't know what it is, it's it's specifically, it's a customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It is much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Chrissy Chaos listeners right now will get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash chaos. That's betterhelp.com slash chaos. Mm. I love it. Dude, so far, man, I'm loving this outdoor summer of chaos. We're going to do try to do as many episodes as we can outdoors. And you know what? Even if it's raining, Pimp, can we? Is this stuff weatherproof, this equipment? Can we get weatherproof boxes? Because I'd like to do every episode, even if it's pouring rain, we just do an episode fully in the rain. Yeah, is that, is, no, but literally, like, would, would the shit sh short circuit? I can figure it out. Yeah? Okay. Um... Guys, so, you know, also, too, what, you know, the last couple of weeks, you know, I was telling Pimp, you know, I like to be honest with, you know, on the pod. You know, I started this podcast. It's, it was cathartic for me. It was like just talking every week, and, and hopefully it's helping you guys. Um, 
a lot of you guys, girls and babies, have been saying on the Patreon, have been commenting on the YouTube, have been stopping Homeless Pimp, or sometimes even me in the street, and saying, hey, you don't look like yourself the last couple of weeks. You've looked stressed. And I'll be honest with you, I was. I was a little stressed, and I feel like a weight's been lifted now because I think what happened was two things. One, you know, when I... The Joe Rogan podcast, it was always like a big goal for me. And when he booked me, he booked me about two months ago. I was saying on the show, oh, who knows if he's going to write back or whatever. But he booked me. And the idea of doing it, which I did it on Monday, May 23rd. It came out Tuesday, May 24th, my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom. Belated. Um, and we said birthday to you. On, happy birthday to you on the last episode. But I was very nervous about that. And I was carrying a lot of anxiety. And I didn't realize it until it was over and came out and got a lot of positive reviews. So thank you very much. Um, I... I wasn't, I, I was just so nervous and harboring so much anxiety towards that, that I didn't realize that it was affecting the podcast, it was affecting me as a person, it was affecting everything. And then also, you know, I had done so many tour dates in the last eight months, this Chrissy Chaos, Chrissy Theaters Everybody tour came to a close um, last week in Phoenix. Thank you for two sold out shows in Phoenix. I, I really appreciate it at Stand Up Live, great club. And the sold out shows we did at the Vulcan in Austin, another fantastic club. Um, I, I just wanted like, because it's you no, know, you know, like when you have to take a crap and you can hold it in, but then when you get off the exit for your house, like it's almost, you're almost turtle doving. It's almost coming out of your ass. And then when you're opening the door, it's literally streaming down your leg. It's shitting down your leg. That's how I felt about this tour is I could, I, I, at the end of it, I got so close to the finish line that I was like, I need to take a shit emotionally. I can't, I started to, I started to feel like I just had to take a crap in every element of my body and every part of my life. And then Phoenix, I finally took a shit. The last show in Phoenix, I just took a dump right on the front row, and I got it out in a positive, great way. And, <laughs> and, and I just think, like, I feel a sense of relief. Like, now, like, the last three days, I just said to myself, I worked out, you know, a little bit in the morning, but I just said to myself, just, just for two days, actually, because today's day three, just for two days, I said, you know what, Chris, just eat whatever you want, just for a, a day, have a few drinks, let loose. You have nothing, you have no shows on the horizon besides July 8th and 9th in Providence, Rhode Island, and August 17th to the 20th at the Bray Improv, Improv in California, christycomedy.com for Tiki Wikis. Um, but no, nothing, nothing really happening big for about a month. You know, I'm doing the podcast, which I love to do, because the podcast doesn't even feel like work. Are we in trouble? I was getting to like a nice critical moment. What happened? Do I want rainbow crumb cakes? No, because daddy's not trying, not trying to diet. Um, now, even though I have in the last two days, um, are, are you going to have your client, Jazz, Vinny? Do you want to say? Do you want to say hello to the people? They miss you. Hold on. Well, no, hold on. No, into the microphone. Here, here, yeah. Just hold it. Just hold it one second. Here, just. Oh my God! Just it hold. Like you every night. Just hold it up. <laughs> hold on, wait. Just hold it. <laughs> just hold it. Oh wow! Do, do you want to come on camera? No, I don't. Why am I coming out on camera? Shout out, uh, Vinny's. Vinny's got leopard print uh, Nike uh, Nike sweat outfit on with a gym NYC hat. There's a new. It's a gym called Gym NYC. A new one just opened it's up. A on new e location, right? New Third? location on East Third Street in Manhattan. So if you want to go check out Gym NYC, uh, it's a great gym. Um, Vin, um, I was saying. <laughs> Whoa, sh wow, one of the first times Vinny sits on the pod. This will be used in court. <laughs> <laughs> For what? I don't know. Well, you know what? How about this, Pimp? Yesterday, we're sitting down. We're, we're, we're all drinking. We're all having a good time. We're telling about the Dominican house party we went to, the Dominican pool party. It's pretty sick. It was pretty sick. We had I the love my Dominicans. I love the Dominicans. We had the neighborhood drug dealers there. We had everybody there. People were getting high. It was a lot of fun. Do my arms look fat right now? Do you all No, you look jacked. Thanks. Uh, you look pr great. Um, so, by the way, me and you are the new Nancy Pelosi and Paul Pelosi. Paul Pelosi's, Nancy Pelosi's husband just reportedly got arrested for a DUI at 82. So we're the new Pelosi's. Oh, my goodness. That's definitely you. So, Except on edibles. On edibles. So, but, well, I want to talk about that. Just two, two point thing, and then I know you got to train a client. Um, so... Yesterday, we're all drinking, having a good time, okay? We're sitting down in, in our friend's family room, lovely time. The girls are playing. It's beautiful. Out of nowhere, she goes, I'm going to write a book about you. 
but I'm going to wait till you're A-list famous, and then I'm going to release the wait, book. did I say that out loud? Yes, she goes, I already have about 50% of the book written. She goes, because right now you're about C+, plus, maybe the I lowest B- minus <laughs> celebrity. She's like, you're really like maybe I'm C+. I'm keeping real. Keep, fine, I, I agree. I would say either I'm I'm C+, plus. I would say I'm, you ain't there yet, I'm C to C+. Plus. I would say, I would. I would say this. Netflix brought me to a C to a C plus celebrity. I think, tell me if you guys think, you know, comment below on the YouTube or whatever. Do you think I'm, a, I'm a, at least, at least a C plus, at least. And if, if I'm not, I'm not. But she said she's going to write a book about my life. So my question is. About our life. About it's our life. all about you. But my question is, 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 because she's like, oh, we're not married, so I need to protect myself. So that's how I'm going to protect myself. Uh, that's how I'm going to get your money. So should I say, my question is, is. Is that, is that actually, wrong? No, is that better than a divorce? Is that, has now she just fi nailed it down where it's like, I don't care if you write the book about me. Write the book, make all the money you want, because then at least I don't have to give you half my shit. You can just make the money off the book. And you know what I'm trying to say? I don't want half your shit. What would you want in a divorce? In the, in the divorce, all, what would you want? What divorce? We're not married. But I'm saying, well, technically we <laughs> and are. why we're, are we getting divorced already? We're married by the laws You're of nature. We're always trying to leave. We're married by the laws of go. nature. We have, we, have two, we have two kids. We have... We have two kids. I've I've seen you at your worst points. You've seen me at my worst points. We are married by the laws of nature. We're not the, married. The marriage is a law that is a piece of paper that some guy made up. Jesus Christ himself, herself, they self, they they gave us our daughters. We didn't choose them. Those were handed to us by the powers that be. That we're bonded he, by like, nature. He knows how to talk so much shit. Like he just. Shut what up. is that? What are you even saying right now? What I'm saying is I'm on edibles. That's what I'm saying is I'm as the edibles have kicked in. Any way to get out of marriage? Why do you even want to get married? Into this. No, First but I want to know why you want to get if married. If you want to bring God into this, we get married. <laughs> but why do you want to get married for real, or do you not care anymore? I just feel like, like that's like a nice like level of commitment to one another. Having making children is look at even the even the towels curtains look, trying to get out of the way. They're like, "Nah." It's ready to choke you. No, the curtains like I know. Is this is this uh, is this Abuelita? Is the ghost of Abuelita <laughs> trying to Oh my am my I in Coco? I'm in Coco dad. right now. <laughs> um You never liked marriage at any point in your life? No. Here's let me be honest. The reason why I don't like marriage is because I'm a child of divorce. So my all, poor client. I like, saw I'm gonna it take this all out on her right now. Nice. <laughs> she hot? Um <laughs> I, 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 I just feel like, I just feel like all I've seen is marriage fail and I'm not, and I feel like my level of commitment to you is clear. We have two children. We have a house together. You, you know, you have a spinoff podcast called the ladies of chaos. I mean, how much you're on the Patreon. I mean, how much more commitment do you want to be? We're going to Savannah, Georgia next week, this weekend, this weekend, we're going to Savannah, Georgia. So sentiment of it. I don't know. Like it's special. You think marriage is special? I think so. But it's another level of commitment. It's just a nice. It's what you do. It's just like what you do. But what? But my question is like, I and honestly, can I be honest? I hate the fact that you call me like your wife without me being your wife. But it's I just, don't think that's. I don't think that's right. But I hear you doing it too when you're trying to get free shit. When I'm trying to get free shit. <laughs> From like Home Depot or like whatever. Oh my god, he's such a liar. <laughs> you say it at the school. Yeah, because it's like, I feel like people respect you more. Like it's just respectable when you when you reference each other that way. But it's but, just, it's not fair. But like, why you don't do you get but, to call me your wife? I say I say you're my wife. I've said it on the show get, before. You don't get to do that though because I'm not your wife. So that's not right. So what do you want to say, my baby's mamas? Yeah, you sound real great saying that. Uh, um, <laughs> no, but Mike, but I think the thing is, is like you know. I don't know. It's just everybody's different. Ooh. I feel like the world evolves, and we are like the level of commitment is a hundred percent. Now, what do you think of the idea that marriage is like a democracy? It'll never truly exist, but you have to fight for the idea of it. Marriage is tr marriage is democracy. It'll never exist, but you have to fight for the idea of it. Got it. Like like true democracy doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> what do I think of that idea? I think um, I think that. It's uh, it's why I vote Republican. No, uh, no, no, no. I think I think that I think that yeah. I think that the idea of marriage started as a business transaction. I think that's what it was. It was to marry families' money together, and it was a business transaction. I think then it morphed into. I think then emotions got involved. I think if you look back at the history of marriage, and why not honor those emotions? 
I feel like we do with the kids and family and life we I have. I gotta go. I'm out of here. <laughs> Why are you leaving? <laughs> Bye. I love you. Yeah, I actually, no, I really actually do. <laughs> oh, hey, Delilah. Um, baby, where are you going? Can you go? Can you, baby, you can't be out here yet. This podcast is still going on. Um, so that was good. So, um, again, like I, do you see, that's going to be in the book. Mm. Oh, I did want to get the, the, she said, I don't know what's going to be in the book. I wanted what? the back cover of the book. Like what, what is the drama of the book? Oh, jazz. Can you come here real quick? Just real quick and tell us what the back cover of the book's going to yeah, be. Like, what's the teaser of the book? Like what's the hook? I know. No, you don't know Delilah. <laughs> I know. She's no. ghost riding it. Yeah. Is Violet okay? Because Jerry's cleaning the pool. Where's Violet? Where's Violet? I don't know. In the little playpen. Where? Oh, he brought the playpen outside? No, I'm not even giving that away yet. Well, if, Wait, if Jazz, is Violet okay? Where's Violet? No, maybe one day I'll... I'll, uh, I'll you don't want to give away the back cover of the book? No. What okay. if I marry you? <laughs> That'd be the title. <laughs> <laughs> what if I marry you? So you... Pr- <laughs> So when you when you see an Instagram post with a broken heart next week from Vinny saying that we've decided to call off the relationship, you have the video evidence of why. Um, prosecute. Oh, speaking of Vinny, prosecutors say Manhattan man punched girlfriend in the face over dinner. Um, so yeah, that would be our life, except reverse, reverse. Crime is booming. Crime is back, baby, in New York City. Um, I think that I'm. Listen, I love New York, but I will tell you. If you want to come visit here, it's not as safe as it was. Five years ago, I could tell you with every being in my, every every cell in my body could tell you with 100% truth that if you came to New York City, you were as safe as you would be in the Vatican, unless you were a boy under 10. You literally, so less, pure safety. Now, I can tell you with every inch in my heart that I don't feel comfortable with my own family going to the city uh, even in broad daylight anymore because the amount of attacks that are happening because of the mental health crisis that is that out of control and, you know, this police budget going down. So I think that I think that we need to do something. Now, I don't know what that is. Is it, you know, is it is it is it arming citizens and then, you know, uh, killing random homeless people? No, I don't think that's the answer. Um, is it is it is it is it, you know, letting the police go back to the tactics they used to enforce in the 90s where they would just beat the shit out of you and whatever. Is that the answer? I'm not saying 100% no, but let's say no. Let's say no. Um, I think what the answer is, is getting, getting, really putting a lot more money into mental health. Like, I mean, millions, maybe a billion more dollars into mental health and forget about riding around in a rocket ship, like a billion dollars into mental health. And and I got to be honest, like, I don't know what the budgets are. I really don't know what the budgets are. But I think it's pretty clear that America has enough problems at home to be giving any money of foreign aid for whatever. Even if you're like, oh, but we have budget that. It's like, well, fucking, you know, let Ukraine can fight. Let you, Ukraine's fighting. Uh, that That's not our war. You get, get money from Ukraine. Get it back here. Let's fix the American cities. Let's fix Flint. Let's let's do all those all the problems. Let's fix that. And let's get money into mental health, folks, because that's what I think the main, 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 main issue is, at least in New York City, is it's just the people, the mental health crisis has gotten so out of control. There's nowhere for them to go. There's no resources. So I think even, we should do- even help them, dude. You got to just, I think you have to put that, like, why is, why are insane asylums closed? I think you have to just put them in insane asylums. No, I have, a, I have a lot of friends that work in, like, the psych world, and they just, yeah, you can't really do much. They're going to take their meds or they're not. Yeah, but there, but there's one of those things where there is a, it, it, so what is responsible for the uptick in, what is it then? Just less people on the train? I think it might be this recession and, I mean. What, well, the recession is real. I will tell you two things. One thing, the recession is real. Two, I kind of think, like, there is a chance we might get nuked. But so I think the plan for us should be the ones of us that live in New York City, LA, Chicago. We need to move to cities that look like they've already been nuked. Let's go to Dayton, Ohio. I'm take. I would love to go there. Let's get out to uh, St. Louis. You know, let's get to these cities <laughs> that look like you know. Let's get out to certain parts of Detroit. Let's go to Nagasaki. They're not going to bomb Nagasaki. No- if you were a city that got nuked, shout out Hiroshima, shout out Nagasaki, you're not going to get nuked again, okay? It's like surviving a plane crash. You will never be in that situation again because the odds that you survive were so low that there's literally a... 
a, a, a impossible probability that happens to you again. Same thing with Nagasaki Hiroshima. You're not going to get nuked again. It's not going to happen. So will you take open, will you open up your borders? Understand I'm an American. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you this. I'm an American, okay? I, by the way, I had nothing to do with 1945 dropping of the bomb. As a matter of fact, most of my ancestry is German, so we're kind of like on your side. I'm kind of like a little axis. So will the borders of Hiroshima and Nagasaki open up for me and my family and my 6,000 Patreon members? Will you open up for I'm Chrissy Koresh? Will you open it up for me so we can get safety in your cities when Vladimir Putin finds out he has 48 hours to live and just starts nuking the shit out of everybody? But he won't hit Hiroshima and Nagasaki because the probability says he can't. So that's what... Now, what do you, what do you think of uh, Bloomberg said there's going to be rolling blackouts worldwide and it'll become normal? Mike Bloom, Michael Bloomberg, former mayor of New York City? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. They're his stupid company. Oh, his stupid company said, that'd be funny if that's how Mike Bloomberg comes back in. Remember when he ran? He stunk. He stunk. Dude, dude do you remember? You might be too young for this. Uh, and if you're not from New York, you might not know this. Michael Bloomberg, in like the middle of his mayoral campaign, banned soda. Yeah, that was sick, He dude. banned big gulps. I kind of fucked with him as mayor. I thought yeah. he was cool. No, honestly, dude. And I, you know what I loved? If you if you pull it up, is there a way to pull up Michael Bloomberg speaking Spanish at in the press? Dude, Michael Bloomberg, for no reason, used to, at the end of all his press conferences, do like a... Welcome back. Do like a... Do like a two-hour press conference and then repeat the whole thing that he said back in Spanish. And his Spanish sucked so hard. It was the funniest thing you've ever seen in your life. He was like, is this him? Here we go. Delilah, please stop, honey. El Huracan Sandy, llamando al tres once o visitando al N-A-Y-C punto G-O-V. Uh, it's probably cave. Uh, I mean, this is just, <laughs> dude. Honestly, this is. First of all, first of all, what Mike Bloomberg needs is Babel. Use the promo code Chaos Language Learning App. Um, um, this is some rich guy shit. This is some rich guy shit. There is it almost is disrespectful. It's more disrespectful. He's doing it that way. I would rather like you're desecrating the Spanish language. Who did he say, Mayor Bloombito? He is just. <laughs> I mean, that Spanish is so... That span The worst Spanish I've ever heard in my life is from Pat Finnegan. Shout out, Patty Fly Balls. When he would read in Spanish Spanish class, I think Mr. S Gomez... Santos. Mr. Santos' in Spanish class. When it was Pat Finnegan's turn, because everyone would have to read, go down the rows. When it was Pat Finnegan's turn, we'd be grabbing our desk, shaking, laughing, trying to hold it in, because his Spanish sucked so bad. He would be like, yo soy necesito, and um, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, uh, Mets, baseball, La Pinguina, um, just horrifying Spanish. Bogota, Col Colombia. <laughs> Bogota. He would do shit like that. He's Spanish sucked. How was so, he at the bachelor party? Pat? They're still at the bachelor party. Oh, still there? Yeah, dude. Jeez. They are not leaving. And, and the Rangers, you know, the, the episode comes out tomorrow, but we're filming it the day before. The Rangers, New York Rangers, have game seven tonight. And they decided to, t to they were supposed to come home t t this morning already. They've been drinking in 105 degree heat on Lake Havasu in Arizona. They've been drinking in Scottsdale and Phoenix, Arizona, 110 degrees in, in at one o'clock. I'm sorry, at 10 a.m., 110 degrees. They've been drinking, not eating. I guarantee you, they haven't eaten food since I seen them three days ago. They just drink all day. They have now decided. They have now decided instead, instead of up. Oh, you good? Listen. Patreon.com slash Chris D Comedy. Over 70 hours of content that do not exist anywhere else but the Patreon. If you're a fan of Chrissy Chaos, which I hope you are, and you're telling your friends about it, tell them Patreon.com slash Chris D Comedy is where the magic happens, where the fun happens. We call our fans the Puerto Ricans. So it's you want to be a true Puerto Rican, even if you were born and raised in Puerto Rico, you are not true Puerto Rican unless you go to patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. 70 hours of content, vlogs, episodes, everything is on there. And also, when we get to 6,000 members, we are going to hold a block party, a huge block party, or take a Staten Island ferry ride that only the Patreon members will know the, the time and date we're doing it. We'll only be sent out there, and we're going to have a huge celebration party at 6,000 Patreon members. So let's get there. We're a family. Patreon.com slash Christy comedy. Okay. Do you need help? 
Okay. They have now decided that to watch Game 7, that what fun is it watching it at home? They tell they're going to Vegas to watch Game 7 tonight. And then get on. They're getting on a six o'clock flight tomorrow morning, and some of them are going straight to work. Jesus. Uh, the f- there's 15 guys that went. The fact that all 15 are still alive and haven't went to the hospital once is shocking. It's shocking to me. But yeah, I think the older I get, the friends I actually like are the ones who could drop dead at any moment. Yeah, that because you know what? It is. It's cool. It's cool to just honestly, dude. What do you want to go out with a slow death? No, dude. Just drop dead at your kid's birthday party. Yeah, from abuse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. But the bachelor party was fun. Um, um, you know, the, I was there one night in Scottsdale. It was a lot of fun. People get absolutely hammered. Um, it was good. These guys, you know, it's funny because they'll, we go out with a group of 15 guys, and by the end of the night, there's only three of them left. You don't know where, you don't know where 75% of the bachelor party, you have no idea where they wound up. Some are in a hotel, some went to a casino, some just took an Uber to nowhere. Where, were you? where was I? I was... I was at um I was at the bar with De- I was at the bar well find out in the book I was in the bar with Debo that's where I was I was in the bar with Debo and then I came home and I had to get on a flight Oh god if you wrote a book it'd be a mess it would just every chapter would be like three <laughs> paragraphs I've two I've I I'm I literally in my I, I might be on like chapter 10,000 just off this podcast <laughs> Mm. Now, how was Rogan? Congrats, by the way, man. I Thank haven't you. seen you since, but Bro. the fans did did say you were nervous. They were like, it was his greatest hits, and he was nervous. He was nervous. Well, I'll tell you this. I think I think that I got nervous. For I wasn't nervous, and I kept telling myself because I had a coffee that morning in Austin, and I kept telling myself, don't don't drink any more. Just have one coffee. So you are baseline. So like you drink the coffee at 9am. We did Rogan at 1pm. So you're not jittery. So you're not nervous. Just have one coffee. That's good enough. You'll, you'll be high off the, you'll be, you know, caffeinated off the experience. So I told myself that I had a great workout at the Equinox gym. Shout out Equinox. Um, and I felt great. I literally am on my way to Rogan and he texts me I was supposed to be there at 1. He goes, hey, man, running a little late. I'll be there at 1.30. So now I had, because I was 12.45, I had 45 minutes to do nothing. And I said, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I got nervous. And then when I get nervous, when my anxiety kicks up to a high level instantly like that, I get very sleepy. So I walked to a coffee shop and I got a coffee. And you see the jitters hitting in in the beginning because I'm too caffeinated. But then I will say... I felt it, and I and I think the comments reflected that from what Pimps told me because I don't look at the comments. By the way, 14 or 15 days off Twitter now, Vanatia is running it, and I got to be honest with you, it has changed everything for me because here's the thing with social media is I'm not saying people are using it for their, you know, their news articles. Like, I get that that's different. But me, you got to understand, like, with, with uh, you know, I, I opened myself up to the public a lot, and there's a lot of times where people say crazy shit, and I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. I didn't want to affect my psyche at all, and most of the time it's on Twitter. They're saying they're saying crazy shit, not not um, not Instagram. But so being off Twitter has been great. But so I haven't don't really see the comments, but the comments that Pimp lets me know about and Venetia lets me know about said that the last half was much better than the first half because I was calmer, and I think I felt a palpable calmness come over me when. I don't know if there's a part in the podcast where Joe Rogan starts talking about leather tire tubes. And I, I, Tim Dillon's advice would be like, if he starts talking about crazy topics, like the protein and alligator meat, you're not, it's not a good episode. So when the tires talk started coming up, I was like, oh damn, am I bombing this episode? So then I pivoted and I said, let's talk about TT Jerry. And then once I started telling him about TT Jerry and Joe Rogan's eyes lit up, I said, now I'm in the clear. And then we did another hour and a half of the podcast to the point where Joe says in the podcast, he goes, oh shit, it's already five o'clock already. Like we got to go. And I was like, did we get over three hours? He was like, oh yeah, buddy. We got to three and a half hours because comics will say, if you're a comic and you get under three hours, that's a bomb of an episode because he loves talking to comics because that's what he is. Um, so, so we got three and a half hours and I, I will say the first part, uh, the fr- I did get him to laugh a little bit in the first part, which was, which was helpful. Um, but um, I definitely felt more in my zone in the second half than the first half. And, and, and you know, what I will say about Joe Rogan show is being a guest on it is, is I felt like, I don't even know if there's much to learn from him because I think he's just so good at what he does and he's his own person like I'm my own person. But 
he asks you, he listens so well. I think that's a great part of being an interviewer is listening. He listens as well as he can for three and a half hours, which is very difficult to someone he barely knows like me, he listens to everything I was saying. And he makes you think introspectively about yourself. Like I said on the Patreon episode, there was a part in the podcast where he, I joke around and say I'm gay. And then he was like, are you gay? And I never thought about that. And now after a few weeks, <laughs> a few days have went by, I'm like, Dude, there's kind of no way I'm not gay. It's just there. And we've been, we've been teetering on this for a long time, but I got to be fully gay. And by the way, the amount of gay men who have been DMing me, just please stop. I mean, I appreciate the love and support from the gay community. Keep bringing that on. But a lot of guys are DMing me. I'm on the DL too. I could tell you're gay. I have a family too. Don't worry about it. Let's meet. I'm like, I can't meet this weekend. I'm going to Savannah, Georgia. After it ends, what happens? Like, you did this giant thing, like... That's what I am having issues with now. It's like after you do something that you've been looking forward to and it feels like nothing. You know what I mean? Like right. it doesn't feel like anything. Well, it's interesting you say that because that is a thing that I I kind of know a little bit about that, the roller coaster of emotions. Cause I've done, you know, what I've considered in my own world big things and then it comes and goes. So I kind of knew that roller coaster to come down. So it, it didn't come down as fast for me this time because I understand it. But because what I was telling myself <clears throat> actually while the episode was going on I was playing this in my head I said it's not about this like it was about the journey to get here and the journey to continue after this that's what life that's what your career is about it's, there's no end point there is no end point until you retire from, from the thing there's really no end point it's just more journeys to get to a, a little bit of a there's no culmination really it's like just a little bit higher thing but then we're you know we're, we're, we're the, the chart the EKG is still going the heart's still beating it's just high spikes ups and downs so I dealt with it I think relatively well um you know not doing rogan because then that night i did kill tony which is a show i always wanted to do too and that was so much fun i think that you say goodbye to him you hug him oh joe rogan so what i did was so what he does is he shows you all around his studio he's got an archery he's got like a like a like you can shoot bows and arrows and crossbows did you try his tank did you try that shit no the sleep deprivation tank he's that. got the show me that a sick like olympic state-of-the-art level gym but at the end he, you know, so I thought maybe we'll go into the gym because I was going to ask him, like, oh, you want to work out? You want to do something? And then at the end, he's like, he, he, he literally, somebody hands him like a, um, like one of like his energy drinks, just gives him an energy drink. And he just walked out of there and he said, you know, um, he said, uh, Oh, sorry. He said, you, you know, you come back anytime. He texted me great stories uh, a little bit after that, which was cool. He texted me great stories. And he said, you come back anytime. But he drank his energy drink. He pet that little wolf thing. That is always there, like that like little animal. You know, like that Joe Rogan animal, like yeah. that wildebeest thing? Yeah, he yeah. gave that little pet on the head, and then he walked out right into his car. But honestly, I like it like that. Oh, 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 no, I'm sorry. Right before we did that, we also peed together in the same urinal, and he didn't take a space, which was interesting. I think that's just dominance, him being like, you want to take a peek? Take a peek interesting. at what this $100 million cock looks like, and I did take a peek. Oh, man, you saw Conan got 100 mil too? For a podcast? Yeah. When are we going to get that? I don't know. These A-list people keep stepping in. Do man. we even want it, though? Do we even want the $100 million deal? Do we want it? Uh, I don't know. Because what are you going to do with all that money? Yeah, probably just... I feel like once you get that much money, you're a pedophile. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I don't want... The, I don't think I want it. <laughs> um, But honestly, dude, the Joe Rogan experience, it genuinely is an experience, was, for me, it, one of the coolest things I ever got to do whether it helps your career, hurts your career, keeps you get on again, none of it's about that. It was about the present moment. And I felt those three hours, three and a half hours did fly by for me. They truly, really did. Like, I couldn't believe that we were at three and a half hours when he said, look at what time it is. I genuinely, I was like, maybe we're at an hour and a half. You didn't feel tired. Wow. I didn't feel tired at all. I noticed, too, he does things like... Like, yes, my shows are usually between 50 minutes and 60 minutes because I'm going high energy, but he does things at such a low, low pace, but still powerful, still insightful. Mm -hmm. That That's one thing that I have tried to learn. Uh, I said I didn't learn anything. I would say, I, I take that back. I did learn that if I'm going to keep up the pace of this career, you kind of have to slow the pace down a little bit. Like, we're, you know, we're, we're hitting a lot of goals. We're, uh, you know, I, I'm proud of the show, um, but we're going to have to, slow the pace just a little bit on air because I realized like that's not sustainable. That's not a sustainable thing. Oh, the TV turned off. Oh, yeah. there it is. Okay. Did it. So, um, but overall, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for sharing it. Um, 
I love being on Joe Rogan. It really was kind of like awesome. Um, but like I said, like anything else in life, and this is, goes for your life too, my life, Pimp's life, not, nothing is an end goal. It's just another thing. You get there, you get there, you do the big thing, and then life keeps going on. Because if, if, you, if you attach yourself to one thing, when you get that thing, you're going to get depressed when that thing's over, whether it's good or bad. That, like, that's why so many Japanese uh, retirees kill themselves because they've attached themselves to their job and then they retire from the job and then they, they have nothing to live for and they kill themselves. They get so depressed, they kill themselves. So Joe Rogan, you know, because I did that show, I don't want to get so depressed, I kill myself. If I, I'll tell you what, if I didn't get it within the next six months, I was going to kill myself live on the Patreon just to feed my family. Um, but, but I'm happy I did it. Hopefully I do it again. But if I don't do it again, if I do do it again, that's not what it was about. It was about getting the chance to do it, and uh, and it was awesome. So, yeah. and Oh, and by the way, I w came out today with no hair product because I wanted to go with bangs. I had bangs in the beginning of the episode. What do you guys think of my bangs? Because I want to, you know, I've seen, a lot of, I've seen a lot of cute Korean men with bangs, so I want to be, I want to catch that next K-pop wave. Um, speaking of K-pop, speaking of Koreans, um, shout out barbecue. I love barbecue. Um, I want to take questions from the Patreon. We do this every episode at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. We pick three or four questions that made us laugh, that made us giggle, that were fun, or just made us think, and we like to read about it and talk about it on the show. So do we have them pulled up, Pimpy? Oh, the sun just killed Pimp's laptop. Oh, it overheated? Here, well, I got I got them on my phone. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, also, I just got a. Uh, I got this thing for Delilah for my daughter. If you're a father out there, even a mother out there, or a good Father's Day gift. Father's Day is coming up. This is a good Father's Day gift. Um, it's called the Love Box. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but basically, what it is is it's a box, like a wooden box, and it's got a digital screen in it. And when I can send a message directly to my daughter, like when I'm on the road, when I'm at home, I can send a message and there's a heart on the front of it and the heart spins until you open up the box and then Delilah will open up the box and read the message from me like, I miss you, baby, daddy loves you, whatever you want. And then she can spin the heart the other way and it sends hearts back to my app and lets me know she read the message and she received my love. So it's a good thing called the love box. There's no promo. I have nothing to do with this product. I genuinely just think it's an amazing thing. It was, I got it for Delilah and she gave me a hug and was like, I love you so much. It was like, wow. I am your dad. That's really sweet. Such a bad name for it. The love box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because guys are going to buy it and just start fucking it. <laughs> and then and then Pimp got Delilah a great gift. He got her um, a box of butterflies, but they got lost in shipping. So we don't know where those butterflies are. I mean, are. no, they're meant for, like, school teachers to order, so it might be, like, two, I don't know, might be, like, two weeks. Those butterflies are dead in a U-Haul truck somewhere up on one interstate. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, just a bunch of dead butterflies. Just a bunch of dead butterflies. So here we go. Let me get uh, these questions, which were, you know, thank you so much. Um, here we go. So the first question is from Emma Anderson. If you could have a romantic relationship with one American president, alive or dead, who would it be and why? That's a very, very, very good question. I mean, yes, am I tempted to say, you know, I have sex with Abraham Lincoln because I, I know, you know, I, if I can get him to marry me, I know I'm going to get his money because he, he goes out quickly. Um, that, but I would say, I think the American president that I would probably um, want to be in a relationship with um, is George Washington. Uh, just because, you know, as you guys know, I love colonial America. And I just heard that George Washington was like six, five, six, six. He was one of the tallest presidents, um, other than Abraham Lincoln. And I kind of just like, you know, like the men back then, they used to wear stockings. He kind of used to dress like women. So I think that I would have sex with, with, with George, uh, George Washington. Um, and then I'd probably ask for a threesome with Martha just because. Um, and also I think George Washington would be good because he had wooden teeth so we could just take those puppies out and then get a nice American colonial blowjob. Happy belated Memorial Day. Um, who would you have sex with, Pimp? Any American president? Any ideas? I just want to see what's going on in Bill Clinton's pants. You know what I mean? Right. He feels obsessed with it. Yeah. And I want to see what he's obsessed with. Yeah. I mean, listen, for sure a close second is Obama. I mean, I'd love to have sex with Obama. Obama's the easy one to have sex with. Yeah, right? Like, he's, I could probably have sex with him right now. He's the only actually hot president. And you think he's on Grinder? He's hotter than JFK. Obama's hotter than JFK? I think so. Honestly, you got to let us know if that's true. Is Obama <laughs> hotter than JFK? I think so. Wow. Okay. What did JFK's voice even sound like? I don't think I remember his voice. <laughs> right, in the, right in the comment section. Who's hotter, Obama or JFK? Good question. Um, I would say, yeah. I would say, for me, it's George Washington. I understand Obama's the second choice. 
Bill Clinton, hilarious and good idea because you want to see what he's packing. Um, I also think there's a part of me I'd like to, I'd have sex with like a um, like a Grover Cleveland. Just because, you know, like, you know, just like a fat He's fuck with suspenders. Rotund man. Rotund man. Oh, I'd have sex with Ulysses S. Grant, too. He gets, he was, he'd was just be hammered for it. Now, I did hear an idea that I thought would make you excited. There's going to be, f- you know, famine and food shortage now. Can't wait. So people are going to all be skinny again, and only the elites will be fat. So that's okay. going to come back now. Okay. Where fat people are hot because it means they have money. Fat people are hot because it means they have money. Interesting. Interesting. Like it used to be back in the day. Used to be back in the day where the fat fat people, yeah, and skinny people had had no food. So interesting. Okay, so that's kind of the that that's that's going to be the new key, the new trend, the new keto, the new weight loss trend is just be poor. Yeah, be poor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then that's how you lose weight, and that's what people are going to probably start to do. That's what you're going to yeah. Next thing you know, you're going to see fucking the keto Guido, Vinny Guadagnino, the keto Guido, just being like, I'm my new workout, my new workout uh, plan is poor. It's crazy, man. I, I went Shout out Keto Guido and Vinny Guadagnino. I love that guy. Man. Oh, we got we got to get to one of his shows at Dude, Chippendales. He just went back. He just went Dude, back. Dude, the video he posted the other day of him walking around, just walking the promo for Chippendales, I was like, yeah, I'll buy a ticket for that. Hot guy, dude. Yeah. Guy. If he was an American president, he'd be my first choice. I'd vote for him. I would vote for him. Yeah, I, I mean, I hope everything's good over there. Didn't they say they were going <laughs> to replace them with young kids now? Jersey Shore's going to go. I read an article. I don't know if it's oh. real. I don't, I don't even know if it's contract negotiation shit, you know. Oh, uh, but what were you gonna say? There was something you were gonna say. Um, jeez, I can't remember. Who knows? Let's go to the second question. I love edibles. Yeah. Um, this is from Elizabeth Rower. R O H R E R. What's the 2022 song of the summer for the Puerto Ricans? What's the summer song? I for for me right now in this house, it's called "It's Raining Tacos." It's Raining Tacos is just a children's song that I have to listen to on repeat. It's raining tacos. Na, 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 sky. Tacos. No need to ask why. Cover your ass. Whatever they say. It's raining tacos. But that's not going to be the song of the summer for you guys. I think the song of the summer, I mean, does Meg Thee Stallion have anything out? Does Who has something? I don't know. It's tough to call yet. Yeah, because I it'll probably happen this month. It'll happen this month. Fat Joe, Pitbull, come out with something nice. I love Fat Joe. Uh, shout out Fat Joe. I saw him attacking six nine in the news again. I'm like, just leave. I texted alone. Fat Joe a year ago to come in the pot. It's been left on red. Uh, we'll get him. We got to get a rapper. Song of the summer song of 2022. I actually don't know. Go to patreoncom Christy Comedy right in the community board. What do you guys think the I, summer I think song it's is? It's probably Harry Styles. I think all the so far Harry Styles. Harry. He's kind of. I get it. He's just this weird hot guy that dresses terribly. He's just in a guy in a skirt, dude. Yeah. Honestly, Braveheart was a guy in a skirt. You guys thought he was hot. He was. You know, he's a fighting force. He was in a skirt. Okay, this is from the Boston Nuts and Butts Serbian Toot. What's the most underrated American city? Underrated American city. You know what? I would say the most underrated American city. Because this is a tough one because there's a lot of cities that are great. This doesn't mean it's my favorite city. We're talking about an underrated city. A city that's, that actually is a lot better than it gets credit for. You know what it is to me? Most underrated city? Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio is a dope city. State capital of Ohio. It's a dope progressive Ohio State's campus campuses in that city. That's an awesome city, Columbus, Ohio. That like you could have a good time at the bars, great restaurants, great shops, f- you know, beautiful downtown area. Columbus, Ohio, I think is the most underrated. Doesn't mean it's my favorite, but underrated. What do you think, Pimp? Do you got one that you've I, seen? I go like Des Moines. I like Des, Moines Des Moines is dope too. Yeah, Des it's Moines. Cl- it's clean. Yeah. And, like the people are not ugly. Bro, They're state nice. capitals. State capitals. That's what it's about. Everyone's got a gun. Okay, this is from Rowdy American. Chris, Chrissy, would you rather see Jazzy in a porn video or your parents in a porn video? <laughs> um, well, if you go to Jasmine's OnlyFans, you can see some of the very sex tapes. Um, Patreon.com slash Jazzy Method. Uh, no, I would, would I rather see Jazzy in a porn video or my parents? I guess, I guess I'd rather... I guess I'd rather see Jazzy in a porn video just because, like... The last thing I want to see is just my dad's butt. I, I think Tampa T has moves, dude. You think, Tam- think you'd rather learn. see Tampa T? But but it's my mom too. I don't want to think about my dad's butt and my mom. Well, what your step-mom? even my stepmom. Yeah. Either one of them. I, I just don't really want to think about my dad's butt. I think it'd be worse for you if it was your mom, mom. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think that would be. It'd be worse for me there. 
Because my thing is like this. With the jazzy porn video, I can at least, like, I can, like, you know, block out her face. I could do something. She still has a great body. So I could be like, oh, I could just put, like, another face on that, and then it doesn't look like her. But, like, my dad, even if I put, even if I put Obama's beautiful face on my dad's body, I still got to look at his crinkly butt, which I don't want to look at because it reminds me of what my butt's going to look like. My butt just, it, my, it just looks like, it's just like a, like, Nick DePaul used to have a joke where he said, this guy's got a ball sack that looks like a used coffee filter. <laughs> like old guys' ball sacks look like used coffee filters. I feel like that's, in a way, what my butt looks like. Interesting. Just It's just bad. Who do you think's hornier, your mom or your dad? Who's hornier, my mom? I mean, I got to say my dad. I got to say my dad. Just because, I mean, dude. I think my dad, like, when he has these visions on all his blood pressure medication, he's seeing black families and he's seeing this guy, that guy. I think it's just because he's horned up. Maybe. I mean, but doesn't it switch at a certain age where women are more sexual than the men? Isn't that, like, late in life? I thought it was. I think it is. I think women, I think it's it, it's an interesting thing nature does. Women are hotter and less horny when they're younger. Guys are uglier and more horny. But then guys get hotter and less horny and women get not as hot and more horny. Chaos, baby. <laughs> chaos, chaos, chaos. ChristyComedy.com for all my dates. We got coming up July 8th and 9th, Providence, Rhode Island, August 17th to the 20th. Bray Improv, California. We'll add some more dates coming up. The fall is being booked now. At Homeless Pimp on Instagram. Um, and, yeah, thank you for listening to this episode. Have a good time. Patreon.com says Christy Comedy, where all the fun happens. Stay gay. Stay chaotic. The summer of chaos is upon us. T.T. Jerry, get some blood pressure medication.